Hello and welcome. I'm the Restless Kaiser and we are Modeling for Advantage. So it's a little bit odd saying that, my own. I do usually have a co-host. It's been a while since I've made videos with that one. So today we're going to have a look at making a desert board. We've made a video already of the kind of grass green board that we made, uh, mostly by using flock. But now we're going to make a desert board. We used to have a desert board which was on one foot square tiles we got from TT Combat. In a lot of ways, I liked it. It was a modular board, but it didn't really make use of the modularity. The hills could go in a few different places. And over time, I got I got really irritated. When you have to watch your stuff back on video, seeing those kind of grid lines across the whole thing, it also made mental measuring quite, quite easy. You know, in terms of understanding distances, could calculate distances much better, which I felt was leveraging the game a little bit. I also had the problem because the tan texture was made from a blend, that if we ever made another tile, which is the whole point of a modular board, I probably wouldn't get exactly the same result. And in fact, if you look at some of our older videos of the desert boards, a quarter of the tiles are a different color to the others. They're not hugely different, but you can definitely notice some lighter ones and some darker ones. So we decided to build a new one. Space in this room means that we use four by four boards at the moment. Step one was to batten it. The importance of battening it is just to stop the kind of edges from starting to fray, bits dropping off the edge of the table. And I just feel cosmetically it just looks nicer battening the edge, although it isn't strictly necessary. It does keep any of your, any of your bits and your flock that have come loose stay on the table rather than move off. And if you needed to recoat it with varnish or something later, you just, you just, nothing's gonna spill from it or anything like that. Um, so we're just using one inch or 25 mil battens all the way around. They come in eight foot lengths. And because the measurements are never seem to be quite perfect on these sheets, we actually needed four lengths of it rather than two cut in half because one of the sides weren't quite equal, etc. We screwed it in from behind the MDF so that the bulk of the screw, the screw went right through all of the MDF and into the batten rather than the other way around. The other way around, there's a risk of it coming off if the, you know, if just the tip of the screw has gone into the MDF. One of my regrets at this stage, uh, as you can see from this bit footage here, is I had assumed that all four sides of the batten would be smooth and and some of them are not. And I should have had more care to make sure that the, that the smooth surface was facing, which would have saved some time sanding later. So we're gonna get a layer down to, to, to seal it because MDF can be quite soaking of other materials. So we wanna first coat, coat that entirely with a little bit of plaster, or I think Americans call it cork, very thin, very thin, added a lot of water, extra water to it. You're really just putting a, a film over the top of the surface. Everything you add is gonna add weight to the board and gonna make it a little more, more brittle and prone to crack, which is a risk with this. So keep this layer thin, loads of water, and just a little bit of filler. Brush that all over, smooth it out, and you're ready for the next step. The next step is to get rid of the colors that we don't want underneath our board, just in case you get a chip or a scratch. You don't want the white of the plaster and you don't want the beige of the board showing through. It's gonna really damage the kind of look overall. So we're gonna paint, just like if we were priming a model, we're gonna do a dark undercoat. We're using a brown here. I'm gonna get that all over. It's not just paint. We've mixed in some plaster here as well. And what we're going to do is we're going to spackle or stipple this on. So this is again quite a thin mixture of plaster. The other coat, the white coat is completely dry now, of course. Um, and this is going to give us the first aspect of our texture. And you can see we're kind of dabbing this on in places, moving it around, because we don't want a bowling green surface to start with. We want some texture to our surface, but we want it small. Otherwise, all of our lay on scenery is going to be higgledy piggledy with angles. If it's too uneven, we're just trying to take that smoothness off it. This does make a hell of a mess and does incline to splash everywhere. It's worth investing in an apron or a warehouse coat or something like that because you are going to get this stuff everywhere. It's also important with this, like the previous stage, when you finish doing it, that you wash your brushes out. It'll clean up with cold water at this point, but if you let that plaster dry, you probably want to throw that brush away. So as you can see there, we've got this 
uneven surface on there, that's going to take some time to try. Depending on the humidity and the temperature in your house or wherever you're doing this, it might take four to six hours. It might take two or three days. That's basically where you are, but make sure it's completely dry. You don't want this stuff moving around later. Now we're going to paint the buttons going around the outside. I'm painting mine black. You paint yours whatever color you want and just matches the stuff that I've done before. We're doing it at this stage because we can be a little bit more untidy with it. We are going to need to put another coat or two on later. But once we start adding our sand to this, we really can't have, we don't want to be painting around it because it's going to change the color of our top coat. So get this done now, at least one coat. It's going to take a little bit of time, but you can be a bit rougher with it because you're going to cover any that spill onto the board. We're going to cover that with material anyway. Now we're doing our first layer of texturing proper. What I've got here is bird sand and quite a lot of it. Call it bird sand. It's actually crushed shells of mollusks. And why this is good as a basing material and we're using it as kind of an under layer for our desert is the crushed shells are of uneven shape and size. The problem you have with sand is they're identical size grains and it can look very, very re regular when you uh, lay it out. Uh, so putting some of this stuff on is gonna mix it up and you'll see we're putting it on in patches. So we're gonna have slightly raised and messier areas. We're applying watered down PVA to an area, spreading it out and then dumping the sand on. That's not enough for it to stick in and of itself. We're gonna to need to put something over the top of that to make it a deer, but it's gonna do half the job for us. Next step, we need to get some glue onto the top of that if we want it to stay. So for this, we use the range of misting bottles where watered down PVA, very thin, like one to 10 and spray it over the top. This project was cursed by misting bottles. We tried here, we just got some like household detergent stuff, and watered down the PVA, tried using that. It didn't work especially well and eventually they cocked out on us. Later on in the project for other areas, we bought a range of commercial ones and they didn't work very well either. Um, we don't actually have a good solution to recommend here because you really do need to be able to spray on watered down PVA several points in this. If anyone knows of a, of a particular brand that works well for watered down PVA in applying large quantities of it, let us know down in the, down in the comments section, please. It really held up the project waiting to get hold of alternative ways of misting on this PVA. Right, so now we're going on to doing the upper layers. You can see there's a lot more materials that we've got here. What we're going to do, and I first came across this from Geek Gaming Scenics, Luke's APS, he made a modular desert board and his material for his top coat was a mixture of sand and ivory tile grout. And it gives you a really interesting finish because it gets rid of the kind of grainy, gritty nature of the sand. Um, and it gives it a really hard top coat because this is tile grout, right? So we started with a two to one mix, two parts sand to one part ivory tile grout. And you can see from Johnny B mixing it here, this bag of tile grout had been lying around for quite a while in the garage from the last time we put some tiles down in the kitchen. And it got quite lumpy. It obviously got some moisture in it. When we come to apply that, I didn't think those lumps looked too bad, but actually, they were and they, they fell on separately. So we ended up actually sieving all of the rest of it after this point. If you find that you're, and when you got to the kind of rocky bits at the end, you just kind of push it through with your hands, push it through a sieve. The missus wasn't too happy about me taking the kitchen sieve to do it, but you know, we rinsed it off and it was fine. So again, we've got our watered down PVA. You go with whatever mixture is going to work well for you. I think we were about four to one here. So it's a bit thicker than what we were using before, but still very watery. You can see it's got quite a, a frothy consistency from us shaking it up in the tub. Because we're going to paint, again, we're going to paint areas that we're going to cover. But now we're covering the whole board. So you can see as we're layering it on, you need to put quite a bit of this stuff on. Um, and the, you're seeing in this one, this is our first batch. Those little white lumps are this this kind of where the, there were lumps in the grout. And as I was laying out, I was like, this is too lumpy. I thought a few bits here and there would be okay, but it's not, which is why we go on to sieve the rest. 
But apart from that, you go on and repeat this process across the whole board. I would recommend, like you've seen here, you kind of like loosely divide it up into nine sections just so your glue's not drying and it just makes it a bit manageable to do it in a few chunks at a time. It's useful if you've got another guy with you who can be working at the other side of the table. In all of this, there's the, you know, it's quite time consuming. It took several days, especially because of the drying time. Because of the way the sand had applied, it, it started it would start to get quite thick in areas because actually the material's quite thin um, and I hadn't appreciated that at the time. So you see what, we ended up brushing it out a little bit and you can see it's left some brush marks. Um, we're gonna address that a little bit later, but that's us trying to smooth it out. It was also a problem that we didn't have enough tile grout really to make it go. So one of the things that John did there was he's got some sand and put some darker patches on. And you can see now he's adding some static grass, which is quite a dark brown, to just put some patches of uneven color on the board. So to address the brush marks, so you can see a little bit low tech there, we're basically blowing on the sand to push it around. It might not look very professional, but it does actually spread the material around a little bit. We probably should have done this before we put all of those darker patches on because we've moved them around a bit as well. So this is another lesson learned from our mistakes. We still need to seal this layer, but you can see this is, you know, a lot different. It's not all one color. It's got that kind of unevenness, which is really important to give it a more natural look. We had serious problems at this stage, as I mentioned earlier, with our misting bottles. We tried a few different ones. We used a bit of washing up liquid as flow improver, and we just couldn't find one that worked. Not that worked very well at all. And it was quite a thin mixture. We tried different consistencies. We tried different bottles. I don't know what we were doing wrong, but in the end, we actually ended up largely giving up. We were all but pouring it on thinly. Looking back, experiment with a few of these before you try, find a misting bottle that works for you, because you do need to seal this layer in. And what we did is we put a thin coat down first, which we largely had to pour on in the end, before we put a thicker coat on, which was to really kind of seal it down forevermore, which was, basically all but neat PVA. And we painted that on. So once it stopped moving around, and that's just giving it that hung top coat because a war gaming table is gonna get a lot of wear and tear. While that last coat is drying, we got some lighter green and sprinkled that on. The funny thing about kind of desert environments is where you do get growth, it is often quite bright and vibrant. And just adding a little flex of lighter green onto the board really again mixes up the kind of color combination on the board and gives it a bit of a natural look. Now it may be because this is the last layer of paint. We're not going to put more on it because it might move it around a bit. It may be that it it doesn't all stick down perfectly, but it's the kind of finish that you can reapply later at any time. The last thing to do was to just paint again, the battening around the outside where bits of sand have caught, where there's been glue. That black inside line in particular does not look very tidy. So we've done another layer of painting on top of that. Try and get the edges as neat as possible this time, cover up any sand marks. I'm pretty happy with this board. I was pretty happy with it. At the, until we moved on to the spraying of the top layer stage, which is where we started our problems because we kind of had to do a rethink. When we poured on water down PVA, um, things moved around a lot more than if we'd misted it. Um, so that's kind of my big takeaway. But I think hopefully you'll have more success than we did. You'll get a better bottle in the first place and hopefully you can achieve similar or even better results. There's a few steps, and because of the layers, there's a lot of drying time. Is there things I'd do differently other than that? And I'm, 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 pretty, I'm pretty happy with it so far. We've used it a bit, and it's pretty hard wearing, and I think that's also a really important feature. Hope this video is of some use to you. Happy gaming. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. If you're still here and you're looking for ways to support the channel, there's obviously a lot of ways down in the description, but a key way is to use our affiliate links to Whaling Games and others. You buy your models from them, it doesn't cost you a penny more, and we earn a little bit of commission. Thank you.